welcome to the very first episode of Going Criticism! The show where we unwind the magic of words, discussing literary stories in a cozy, casual setting. I am your host, Odessa, and let's embark this wonderful journey with all of you. Hot you tabi naman di ko makita yung script. Before we dive into our talk for today, we would like to thank our sponsor for making this episode possible. Twinings! Wag magkape sa lamay, magtaa sa bahay. And copy tea, copy mo. Now, let me introduce to you our first guest, Amiel Padilla, an English literature student of Gordon College. Yes, and an Adine Gordimer enthusiast. Let us give a hand. And of course, our second guest, Teddy Marie, her best friend. That's it? That's your description? Yeah, that's it. If you're asking for, for a title, then I have none because I'm a fine arts major. A fine arts major? Yeah. That's fine. So, why are you here? Oh, that. Because you'll need a translator. Translator? Yeah. Is she a foreigner? She looks like a Filipino to me. Oh, no, no. She's Filipino. Oh, Filipino. So, why? Fantastic! So now, let's unravel the layers of Once Upon a Time and uncover its timeless themes, character depths, and the impact it had on the world of literature. Why naman kasi may interpreter pa? Kasi ni Susan. The scriptwriter decided that, don't ask me. But first, a quick reminder to our listeners for today. If you are enjoying our literary conversations, Please subscribe to the ACM Films YouTube channel and leave a comment to this podcast. Your support helps us spread the joy of reading. Now that we have settled into our going criticism, let us dive deep into a historical criticism of Nadine Gordimer's Once Upon a Time. Ami, as our resident literature expert, could you give us some historical context for this work? Yes. Oh, she meant, she meant to say that Once Upon a Time was published in 1989 during a critical period in South Africa's history. It's important to understand the backdrop of apartheid, the policy of racial segregation, and the social unrest that defined that era. Gardimer's writing was deeply rooted in her own experiences, and this story serves as a powerful experiences, a powerful allegory rather, for the ra racial tensions and injustices of the time. Huh? What do you mean she meant to say? She just said yes! Yes, I just interpreted her words. So, I have been informed that Annie is a bit introverted. So, Cherry became her spokesperson slash interpreter. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Interpret! <laughs> oh, she meant to say yes. Yes, only? Why did you did it? She said yes earlier. Oh, that? Because that's a different yes. Ah! Stop! So, Cherry, uh, I mean, Ami. Ami said that the, that the story reflects the societal pressure and the struggles of people face during apartheid. May I ask what apartheid means? Apartheid was a system of institutionalized racial segregation and discrimination that was enforced by the government of South Africa between 1948 and 1994. Oh, so... Allow me to interpret. Huh? So under apartheid, the South African government classified and segregated people into racial groups, pri primarily white, black, colored, and injured, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, and <coughs> implemented strict laws and policies that discriminated against non-white South Africans in various aspects of life, including education, employment, housing, and political rights. Also, Nelson Mandela. Oh, what do what does Nelson Mandela have to do with this? Please wait for the interpretation. So she said that Nelson Mandela who had been in prison for his anti-apartheid activities became South Africa's first black president in 1994, mar uh, marking the end of apartheid. So that's 
sorry. So, to proceed, as a literary critic, how do you see Gordimer's handling of these themes in Once Upon a Time? Miss Ami? Yes! Maksin ako itong mga guests na to, Matthew! Well, sa grupo yan ni Mom Mads, ano pa ba? <laughs> sorry! Okay. Miss Gordimer is brilliant. Give me a minute. So she's saying, she's saying that <laughs> Gordimer's brilliance lies in her ability to address these pressing issues through a seemingly simple narrative. She uses the uh, fairy tale format to create a thought-provoking commentary on the irrational fear and paranoia that beat South African society during those times. The way she weaves the story and builds the tension is a testament to her literary mastery. In <laughs> It's fascinating. <laughs> Excuse me. It's, it's my throat. It hurts. It's so fine. indeed, it's fascinating how she blends the familiar elements of a fairy tale with the harsh reality of the society. It makes the reader reflect deeply on the issues that is discussed. So, Annie, listen to me. What would you say is the enduring relevance of Once Upon a Time in the context of today's world? It is a warning. What warning? So anyways, she meant that Once Upon a Time remains relevant because it serves as a warning about the consequences of blind prejudice and fear. While South Africa has moved beyond apartheid, these themes resonate in many parts of the world today, and it encourages us to examine our own societies and question the pre prejudices that persist. Mm. Yes, that's true, Miss Lacey is correct. Yes, I agree. Ah, sorry, direct. Na. Okay, literature has this unique power to hold the mirror to society and inspire change. So, Cherry, Cherry. Any final thoughts on the historical significance of this work? Wait, for, why are you asking me? I'm just an interpreter, you know? And? That's it. This is my show! I can order everyone. I can even sell the PD name if I want more ratings. Okay. Odessa! Oh, what? Oh, By the way, guys, he's single. So if you wanted to know more about this, uh, If you wanted to... Wait na, out of the script na yan, okay? Stop na. Too much information na. No, I have the power. According to the 1987. <laughs> In a rapidly changing world, it's important to revisit, revisit classics like Once Upon a Time to understand our history and learn from it. Gardner's writing is a reminder that literature can transcend time and place, providing valuable insights into the human condition. Okay, won't Ami interpret you? No, I am her interpreter, but she's not my interpreter, so no. Ha, huh. true so. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, then. Sorry, here, okay. Well said, Cherry. Thank you both for sharing your insights on the historical criticism of Nadine Gordimer's Once Upon a Time. And the clue behind this program, kidding it? <laughs> and it's been a truly enlightening and highly dynamic discussion. It's our pleasure. Okay, and to our listeners, remember that literature has the power to hold the present and the past. And if you enjoyed this conversation today, please do not forget to comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Your support helps us continue our literary explorations. Again, thank you for joining the Going Criticism! Until next time, keep turning those pages!